Professor, could you spare a moment? Hmm. How may I help you? I'm interested in the Goblin Rebellions of the past. Ah, certainly. Their history is part of our history. In fact, you can trace most Goblin Rebellions to wizard intervention. More specifically, the laws governing wands and who may legally possess them. The Goblin Rebellion of 1612, for example, arose from goblin frustration over lack of representation on the Wizengamot. It became a terrible, blood-soaked affair. Take heart, though. Our current peace and prosperity shows that violence can be transitory. But Hogsmeade was just attacked, Professor. If I'm not mistaken, and I rarely am, one of the 18th century's rebellions was led by Erg the Unclean. He had been dunked in a pond publicly by a group of young wizards, if you can imagine that. Another rebellion in 1752... The rebellion was so badly mishandled that Minister for Magic Albert Boot was forced to resign. That being said, his replacement, one Basil Flack, lasted mere weeks. Best sort of vindication, if you ask my opinion. Please, go on. Two months into Flack's tenure, bad went to worse when the werewolves allied with the goblins. Quite smartly, Flack resigned rather than deal with their combined forces. Minister Flack was succeeded by one Hephaestus Gore, who quickly quashed the jewel uprisings with his signature brutality. It is worth noting that many historians believe this punitive response led to even more werewolf conflict. You have noted all of this, have you not? Oh, oh yes, Professor. Please, continue. Continue? <laughs> I take it your thirst for knowledge has yet to be quenched. If you would be so kind, Professor Binns. <laughs> I rarely find an audience, captive or otherwise, eager to engage in such historical minutia. I find your lectures quite engaging, sir. Thank you for sharing your vast knowledge. Oh, my sincere pleasure. Now, I do believe I should be preparing for my next class. Good day to you.